are gonna give you the tools that you need to destroy yourself. We must not hate those who have done wrong to us, for as soon as we hate them, we become just like them. Hey, what's going on everyone? It's B. Avery here and welcome to my opinion slash review for All Eyes on Me, which delves into the supposed true story of arguably one of the best rappers of all time, Tupac Shakur. Now there's a lot of controversy over this film regarding its validity. So is it any good? Well, let's dive into it. My name is Brandon Keith Avery and this is just my opinion. Now, like I said, all Eyes on Me focus on the supposed true and untold story of the great legendary icon of Tupac Shakur. It's directed by Benny Boom. The only work that I'm familiar of his is a film he did in 2009 called Next Day Air. I like that film. It had a lot of surprises. It's very good. If you haven't seen it, I strongly recommend it. Now, if you know the story of Tupac, you know that in real life he had a good strong relationship with Jada Pinkin, who is now Jada Pinkin Smith. All over Twitter recently, she had a very strong opinion on what actually went down in this film. The actress that portrays her is Kat Graham, and she looks just like Jada Pinkin, in my opinion, and did a fair okay job in the small role that she had within the film. Tupac is being played by Demetrius Ship Jr. This is his first acting role ever and for the most part I thought he did a really great job he looks exactly like Tupac like this could be his son or lost twin clone brother that got separated at birth or something he's really able to feel the shoes of the legendary icon Tupac to make you feel that you're actually seeing the real life person on screen some of his scenes felt really true and genuine but at times where he was trying to be passionate and emote a lot of emotion and show rage and frustration I thought it was a little bit over the top so sometimes a little bit cringe worthy but for the most part he did a great job but getting into the plot of the film the first half of this film was basically horrible and the second half of the film did pick up to actually give you somewhat of a decent film and while I said that the first half is bad is because I did not feel like I was watching a film a movie or a biography it felt like I was being forced to watch a dull interview that I was not interested in that kept cutting back and forth to Tupac's greatest hits now now, the thing about the greatest hits that they're showing in this movie it is great because it's not giving you the footage that you grew up with back in the 90s it gives you the background of how he recorded some of his music videos wrote some of his songs and how he was portrayed in a lot of the movies that he did back in the 90s like juice above the rim high learning etc and what brings the film down to me is when you're watching these scenes at the beginning of the film that's showing Tupac's whole background as soon as the scene starts to get good and rev up or about to transition to the other it doesn't transition to the other it transitions back to that same dull interview that you don't care about and it just becomes really jarring I mean it just kills the momentum it kills the motivation it kills everything you know you're just like oh, oh my gosh why are we here again but what I also like about the beginning of the film is it does shine light on Tupac's mother, uh, Fina Shakir, played by Denai Guerrero, who is really popular in the Walking Dead series on AMC. She's the black chick with dreads that's always going around with the samurai sword cutting people up. So she did a great job. She actually probably had the best performance of this whole entire movie. I really liked her a lot. This is only the second piece of entertainment that I have seen her in besides The Walking Dead and I thought she did a phenomenal job and I actually cannot wait till February of 2018 next year to see her as uh, one of the Dora Milaje, the people that protect Black Panther. But seeing her in this film as a Black Panther and how Tupac was brought into this world with his biological father and his stepfather and just delving in with a little bit of the Black Panthers, I did like that. But then again, I don't like how the scenes that I was liking when it was getting good, it switched back over to that interview that just killed everything for me, making me shrug my shoulders and sigh deep breaths in frustration. But another thing that I don't think that the film did a great job is when you're getting to see Tupac early on, you know, just to be honest with you, 
he really didn't come across as a you know mean threatening thug life persona that the media tried to portray him at i mean he really came across as just a nice guy that just wanted to live and he collected puppies but then all of a sudden it the film transitions over to him to where he's trying to be just some hard badass spitting all these lyrics and i don't think the film did a great job of showing that jump from him appearing like a nice guy to this tough guy that he was portrayed as until the day of his untimely death unfortunately but during the second half of the film that's where things really got good for me because it wasn't switching back and forth this actually felt like a movie and you really did get a true account of what went down from tupac's perspective like the rape case he was charged with the time he got shot five times and he felt like he was jumped all these are like iconic stories some good some bad you really did good a good taste of how he received it from his end and the film also did a great job of showing just how caring and passionate he was when something tragic happened in his life around him or right in front of him it, he was affected by it and Demetrius Ship Jr. did a great job of portraying that on screen. Overall, I did slightly enjoy the film for the most part, but that first half of the movie, it was detestable. I dang near hated it and it was just really frustrating. But at that second half, because this film does come in at two hours and 20 minute runtime, during that second half, that last hour, that last hour and 20 minutes or so, it did pick up. It was fun. I learned a lot and I do have even more respect for Tupac now than I even did before. But if I had to rate this film out of a 1 out of 10, I would give it a 6 out of 10. Yes, a 6 out of 10. But guys, that's just my opinion. Have you seen All Eyes on Me? Do you want to see it? Have I turned you on? Have I turned you off? Do you agree with me or do you disagree with me? Let me know in the comment section below. Let's get this conversation going and keep it flowing. And guys, I mentioned it in this review. I really, 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 really cannot wait for the Black Panther movie to be released February of 2018 next year. I love Black Panther. I love Marvel. I love comics. I'm a black guy and that movie is being released in Black History Month. And I really want to go to the red carpet premiere because that would just be a dream come true for me. Is it a long shot? Yeah, who knows? But I'm going for it. So please help me and get there by sharing this video 1,000 times. And if you like this video, go ahead and give me that thumbs up. And if you didn't like this video, that's fine. Just leave me a comment below why and still give me the thumbs up. Since you're watching this video on YouTube, go ahead and subscribe to my YouTube channel so you can get all the content that I have to provide. And please help me reach my first milestone milestone of reaching 1,000 subscribers. You look at the bottom of my screen, check out my website, go there and bookmark it, and also look me up on social media. But guys, I just want to thank you again for tuning in for my opinion slash review of All Eyes on Me. And before you go, don't forget that my name is Brennan Keith Avery, and that's just my opinion. Peace.